station. It's also a country passionately in love with sport and the motor car, with a heritage going back to the city-to-city -city road races of the 1930s, through drivers like Juan Manuel Fangio and Froelen Gonzalez in the 1950s, and with a thriving national rally championship today. The hills around Cordoba offer classic gravel rally stages, a tough test of car and driver, but the best in the world are in the lineup for the 13th Rally of Argentina. World Championship leaders Ford and Toyota, along with Lancia, have made the journey from their European bases, while even privateers such as the father and son Rudy and Manfred Stoll have made the long journey west with two powerful Audi Quattros. Argentina is every time was good for me. It's my seventh time here. And I hope this year to retire in the new car. Well, what has been your best result here? Uh, two times fourth. Uh -huh. And you say you have a new car? Yes, but uh, it's true. Uh, it's more power and I hope I can drive it. <laughs> Another driver with more power is young Carlos Menem, the son of the Argentinian president, who will drive a full house Group A Escort Cosworth for the first time. His compatriot, Giorgio Ricaldi, is moving back to Group N. He'll continue to use the top-run rating Lancia for the rest of the year in a bid to win the Group N Championship title. From Portugal comes Antonio Coutinho in his Group N Escort Cosworth, while adding to a truly international flavour, the first ever Ukrainian work rally entry, five Zafrajet 1100cc cars, as the Rally of Argentina gets a truly worldwide following. So here this year the organizers have been very helpful and the rally is relatively easy to service. Also we have got a lot of assistance with customs clearance and so on. Of course it is a big thing to, to, um, to move everything here, but this year we could come with quite a reduced operation from, from the years before. Cost-wise it is cheaper for us to come here or to go to New Zealand and Australia than just to do Portugal or Greece. However, missing from the Toyota lineup is Juha Pironen, who's been Kankanen's co-driver for over eight years. The week before the rally, Pironen collapsed with a brain hemorrhage, and after treatment in Buenos Aires, is now convalescing back in Helsinki. We're sure that rallying enthusiasts the world over will join us in wishing Juha a full and rapid recovery. So joining Kankanen at short notice is Welshman Nicky Griss, and we have to find whether this traumatic change has affected his approach to the rally. He is a professional co-driver and it's no problem with the notes or things like that. Okay, we had only three days time to, to do it recce and it was a very short time, but so that was the problem. But I think it should go quite well and, and, and we, anyway we had time to do three, two times the safety together, so I can't see there any any main problem. Good to be back in a team, certainly with probably one of the best cars in the World Championship at the moment and especially with a three times world champion I sit beside, I mean that's even better still. Hey, I, I really am looking forward to it and also the next rally that we do as well. It's a late entry for three times winner Mickey Biasion. It's a sure sign that Ford have got their eye on the manufacturer's title. We didn't have so much time to realize everything and to build the car but finally we are here. I've been practicing two days with the standard car and then the practice car arrived. So we are quite happy now. How many successes here? Mickey? I've won three times, so it's one of my favorite rallies. I hope to have a good event. After success in Portugal, Corsica and the Acropolis rally in Greece, Ford have closed on the early season leaders Toyota to equal their points total. It's certainly an impressive achievement. The Escort Cosworth only made its debut in the hills above Monte Carlo in January. Didier Oriol's had a tough year so far. We asked him when his luck's going to change. No, I think after we, we are not really lucky. Okay, in Swedish we have some problem. In, in Corsica I am not really happy by the car, but okay, we can still run. Okay, in Greece we have, uh, I think we have a good car in Greece because I opened the road and when I broke the engine I am just behind Vatanen. And uh, when you open the road you lose a lot of time. And I think it's more, the more important is the car feels still well. After, yeah, I think he has worked a lot. I have made a lot of kilometers with the car with no problem. Now we see him doing the same. But the reigning champion Carlos Sainz is another hoping for a change of fortune. So far I am as happy as the of Agropolis. No, oh, I think it's... We have to, to see here where we are. It's an interesting rally. We have been working hard in the preparation of the rally, practicing. And we will see. I think you are also can, can make good times. 
when, when for sure he and his new co-driver uh, can make a, a few kilometers for sure it's going to be fast. He has been always fast and we have to, to check for you are. The other three, difficult to say. Obviously, I, I think the others are more thinking in uh, a battle between them, so maybe it's good for me. This year's Rally of Argentina opens with a super special stage on Wednesday evening before the cars head south on Thursday for seven more stages and arrival in Cordoba. Leg 2 offers a further ten stages on Friday before seven more stages around Cordoba on Saturday completes the event after a total distance 1,836 kilometres. And the popularity of rallying in Argentina is obvious when you see the huge crowd at the opening super special stage in Tucumán. Midwinter sunshine removing the chill from the air as almost 100,000 people pack into the Hippodrome San Miguel horse race course for the two and a half mile stage on Wednesday night before the rally heads south to Cordoba and continues its first leg on Thursday morning. Former Formula One driver Carlos Reutemann, now the president of the province of Santa Fe, waves the Argentine flag and 1992 winners Didier Orio and Bernardo Celli leave the starting ramp and unusually head straight into the control at the start of the first stage. Normally the cars have a road section in between, which allows the crew to warm up engines and transmissions and the leading teams are all concerned about the effect of going flat out on a relatively cold engine. Carlos Sainz and Lewis Moya start second, but already the crowd's excitement indicates that Oriol's Toyota is on the stage and the rally of Argentina 1993 is go. making a spectacular start to his 50th World Championship Rally, covering the twisting two and a half miles in two minutes and 59 seconds. While on the starting ramp, Mickey Biasion, a three times Argentine winner for Lancia, prepares to start Ford's first rally outside Europe since 1987. It's continuous action on the Tucumán stage as Biasion leads the start ramp in car number three, Sainz drops the clutch in the Lancia Integrale. Just a second slower than Oreo, the Lancia matches the pace of the Toyota, but already falling oil pressure and a drop in power is worrying Saint. So that cold start has created an engine problem on the very first stage of the rally. Now it's go for the Escort. Mickey Biasion and co-driver Tiziana Siviero alongside him, and just look at that acceleration. Second, third, fourth gear through the chicane and already up to 70 miles an hour. Then into the tightening curve of the horse race course, a fantastic display of car control. The Asian working hard in the Escort matches the three minute time set by Saint in the Lancia. Both drivers are just a second slower than Oriol's Toyota, but now on the stage is Juha Tankinen and Nicky Grinch, and they're flying. Starting ramp is Carlos Menem Jr., the son of the Argentine president, in his first ever rally at the wheel of a Group A Escort Cosworth. He'll start the stage behind the second Jolly Club Lantier of Gustavo Pelle. But at the end of the stage, as Tankinen and Gris set the fastest time of 2 minutes and 56 seconds, their windscreen frames drama for Carlos Saint. His Lantier has blown its engine and is out of the rally after just 3 miles. Trellis is left up hold the honours for the troubled Lantier team. His car had its engine changed after a big blow-up in testing, but for the moment at least, it's still going well, and he's in fourth place. Set to move up to fifth as a result of Saint's retirement after the opening stage, President's son Menem's getting enthusiastic support from his home crowd. So is Jorge Regalde in his Group N Lancia Integrale, but after the first stage, he's headed by the escort Cosworth and Mohamed Bill Salayem whose start line misfire cleared in time for him to lead Group N by two seconds. So after a single special stage, it's farewell to Tucumán, and after the overnight halt, the cars head the 350 miles south to Cordoba. 
An enthusiastic following for local hero Jorge Regalde as leg one of the rally continues after the overnight halt with seven stages heading into the heart of Argentina. A 4.15 a.m. start for the cruise with three stages before a midday regroup at Jesus Maria, then a further three stages followed by a spectator stage to end the day as the hill country between Tucumán and Cordoba offers classic loose surface rally action. Museo Feder, the third special stage and the longest of the rally at 27 and a half miles. Juha Kankanen leads his Toyota teammate Didier Oriol by just three seconds, but right behind the escort Cosworth of Mickey Biasion poised to take advantage of any misfortunes, the experienced Italian mixing aggression with car-preserving caution as he matches the leader's pace. However, Biasion was set to lose time on this stage when the escort developed a persistent misfire after a water crossing three miles from the finish and Didier Orio reinforced his second place by a 13 second margin. However, ahead of them both, even after the reduced reconnaissance and with a new co-driver for the first time in eight years, Kankanen was in a class of his own, driving right to the limit as our cameraman found to his cost. Less than a minute behind the leaders, Gustavo Trellis was finding it hard work in fourth place. The Uruguayan's Lancia is difficult to control even in a straight line and he's trying a whole range of different springs and shock absorbers to find the cure. Keeping the pressure on Trellis, Carlos Menem's impressing the regulars with his speed and maturity. In fifth place, he's handling the pressure of being a celebrity on home ground just as well as the power of his escort Cosworth and the huge spectator interest increases as the route heads down the Sierra de Cordobas, the halfway point between the mountainous Andes and the flatlands of the Pampas. Threading his way between the crowds at up to 130 miles an hour, Kankerman later commented how well behaved the crowd were this year, apart from the dog. Undaunted by his canine encounter, Kankerman continues to extend his lead, by the first stage after the regroup at Jesus Maria, the margin stands at 21 seconds. Second behind Kankanen, there's been drama and a change of places though, as despite suffering a broken shock absorber, Mickey Biasion's moved up to second in the Escort Cosworth. Obviously, Oriole's in trouble, and as the Toyota tackles the fifth special stage, the problem can be clearly heard in the Salika's exhaust note. The airbox problems mean that the Frenchman can't flex certain gears, and even despite screaming the Toyota's engine to its rev limit, he's losing over five seconds a mile to Biasion. Biasion knows he's passed Oriol on stage time. He wants to close up on Kankanen, but each time he closes on the troubled Toyota, he faces a big problem, dust. With visibility down to a minimum, Biasion loses over 20 seconds on the rally leader as he's forced to eat Oriol's dust for three and a half miles before the Frenchman sees him in his mirrors and pulls out of the way. Once past Oriol, Biasion has a clear track ahead of him and he's determined to attack, but the delay in the dust means he's 41 seconds behind Cantonen, while Trellis moves up to third as a result of Oriol's problems. The cheers of the locals, Carlos Menem continues in a fine fifth place, while Mohammed bin Suleyem sixth overall, but now leads Group N by over seven minutes. Behind bin Suleyem, Antonio Coutinho is now second in class, and it's been a day of bad luck for local hero Jorge Ricalde. A broken gear lever cost him 50 seconds of road penalties and dropped him off the leaderboard. Manfred Stoll in the Audis, heading the father and son battle between the two privateers. He's in seventh place, three minutes and two places ahead of his father, Rudy. Toyota service was just the final spectator stage to go, and it looks as if everything's going to plan for a relaxed Yuha Kankanen. In contrast, Oriol's rally's turning into a nightmare. The gearbox is jammed in second, and the rules state it can't be replaced till the end of the leg in two stages' time. Uh, in the first stage of this morning, uh, I have a big problem with gearbox. I lose uh, the third gear, the fourth gear. And after the stage after, I lose also the five gear. And the stage after, I lose the six gear. And I have only second gear. I do the stage in second gear, but okay, I think we are very lucky to be here because it's a lot of noise and 
we have just one thing. The camping site on the outskirts of Cordoba gives the huge crowd the chance to see the cars on their return to the city on each of the next three nights. Kankanen started the stage with a 41 second lead and he's still pushing hard. He and co-driver Nicky Grist proving a strong pairing on their first rally together. If Grist wins this event with Kankanen, he'll be the first Briton to win a World Championship event since the early 1980s. Second place, Biafion determined to close the gap on Kankanen. Fastest on the stage by a four second margin, he reduces the Finn's overnight lead to 37 seconds. In third place, despite still suffering handling problems, Gustavo Troas is having a strong early rally. The Madrid based Uruguayan is now a little over three minutes ahead of the troubled Oriole. But on this tight, twisting special stage, Oriol's car is at less of a disadvantage. Despite just having second gear, he's still fourth fastest on the stage. But there's local disappointment because Jorge Ricaldis is out, his rear suspension having broken in the previous stage, and that means Mohamed bin Suleyem in sixth overall has a strong lead in Group N. Christine Zuriano needs to finish this rally in order to qualify for the Women's World Championship so her team instructions are to take it very carefully. However, her caution isn't very popular with the spectators. It's not too popular with the drivers behind her either. Manfred Stahl and Carl Gerlach in seventh place have been touching the slow-moving Citroën and it's dust cloud on every stage. It's a bit uh, tricky to count. And the ladies ahead us, it was a bit dusty, so we could go the speed we want to go. Not a lot of time, did it? I think so, yes because uh, three stages we had to overtake and two stages we stayed behind and um, we lose for so many minutes. Cordoba and the overnight halt marks the end of the first leg. Just routine servicing for Biasion's escort, but Mickey has found it a frustrating day. Uh, not so good, I had some problem, uh, especially with the dust of uh, the Oriol that uh, was in front of me with the gearbox broken. And, uh, he told that he didn't see me, but uh, I stay seven kilometers behind him and before to overtake, so it was quite difficult. Is this normal team tactics, do you think, for them? No, I think that, uh, I hope that Didier didn't see me, I hope. So the end of a two-day opening leg of the Rally of Argentina, and already high drama with reigning world champions Carlos Sainz and Luis Moya out on the very first stage, and last year's winner Didier Oriol dropping back with gearbox trouble. But Juha Kankanen and his new co-driver Nicky Grist head the field with Nicky Biasion in hot pursuit in the escort and two more days, 17 more special stages and over a thousand kilometres still to go. This second leg includes not only the most competitive mileage of the event but also the longest stage of the rally, El Mirador Taninga, over 50 kilometres long and is held just after dawn. Fast and demanding, it's the ideal place for Biafion to mount his attack on Kankanen's overnight lead. But Kankanen has other ideas. Kankanen and Grist setting the pace, covering the 27 and a half miles in just 26 minutes and 17 seconds. But behind them, Biafion is pushing equally hard. The escort Cosworth matching the Toyota's pace on the early part of the stage. But on El Condor, the downhill hairpins, he pulled back a massive 30 seconds on Kankanen, the Italian giving an absolutely dazzling display of driving right on the limit. and the Ford, Gustavo Trellet is unable to match the pace of the leaders, but his car's handling better after the rear differential was changed overnight, and he's now holding his third place ahead of Oreo, who's again suffering from gear selection problems.
the local fans cheering on the Uruguayan, trying harder than ever to uphold the Lancia honours. Behind the Lancia, Didier Oriol's gearbox problems have moved him down the order. He's now running 11th on the road. So following in the Lancia's dust cloud, it's Carlos Menem in fifth place. Although his service crew changed both rear dampers after this special stage, the terrain here is no place for weak shock absorbers. holding sixth place, Mohammed bin Suleyem continues to extend his lead in Group N. While behind them in 10th overall, second in Group N, it's the Portuguese driver Antonio Coutinho on his first ever rally in Argentina. Behind him, of course, D.A. Oriol. He's trying to make up time on the Lancia of Trellis, but each time he catches up with the slower cars in front, he hits their dust. Heading for the regroup at Mina Clavero, the westernmost point of the rally, Didier Oriol takes a moment to relax after what's been a very frustrating day. Yeah, this morning I have some problem again with the gearbox. Um, I, have, uh, I can't move the gearbox, it's very difficult. And, uh, but it's not my big, pro big problem in the first stage because I come back on, on trailer. I arrive uh, behind, uh, I don't remember, a group N car and after 10 km after I stay, I stay behind him and I wait. <laughs> Last stage I have no dust and I do the same time of Concordia. Once again huge crowds turn out, scattering across the hillside as the route loops northwards before returning to Cordoba for the overnight halt. And at the head of the field it's Juha Tankman very much in command. He's extending his lead in front of an impassioned crowd one minute and 13 seconds ahead of the opposition as the cars head back to the overnight hall. Behind the Toyota, Biasion is still charging hard, but the dust has ruined any chance of his catching Tankman in the mountains. And with the final day stages in the flat campus country, the dust there is likely to be worse. At the start of this rally, it looked as if it was going to be disappointment for Lancia, with Carlos Sainz dropping out on the first stage. But for Gustavo Trelle, the Uruguayan driver upholding the Italian team's honours with that fine third place seven minutes ahead of Oriol. Carlos Menem, fifth. 24 minutes and 27 seconds behind the leaders on the return to Cordoba, but still ahead of Bin Suleyem in the Group N Escort, dominating the category and running in a fine sixth place. But the local crowds are cheering on their local heroes, and it's Gabriel Reyes running in eighth place, one of the three rallying brothers who've all been Argentinian champions. His 22-year-old youngest brother, also in a Renault 18, is currently 11th, and watch this for a party piece. Even though he's right on the limit with the Renault 18, watch his hand out of the window as he waves to his fans. What a showman. It's more serious in the Audi as Rudi Stoll battles to seventh place with the big, powerful but very heavy Coupe S2. But how about this for a difference in style? Omar De Giovanni with his co-driver Jose Alera under the bonnet operating the throttle by hand after the accelerator cable has snapped. The resourceful Argentinian rally drivers make it out of the stage. Meanwhile, at the Toyota service, after three days in the car, what does Nicky Grist think of riding with the world champion? Being probably a three times world champion, I mean, you can understand it. He's obviously very, very good. Tremendous car control and a lot of aggression as well. And uh, certainly very, very good. And uh, never seems to drive, sort of get wise on corners and 
starts doing silly things, I mean, he doesn't do that. I mean, bearing in mind, all the drivers that I've been with really are very, very good, and uh, it's a very fine line, like anything. But you can just see little things which make him just a little bit better. I think he's trying very hard and reading very well the notes. No problem at all. Okay, little spin in one place, but that's all. So, perfect day and very happy about that. Meanwhile, in the Ford Escort camp, everything's going relatively well, but it's still been a very frustrating day for Mickey Biasion. This morning, I was very unlucky because there, is, uh, there was no wind at all, and all the dust stay in the road. So many times I have to stop in the stage and to wait for the dust to go out. And so I lost many, many seconds, and too much for, to try to attack it. All the stages where I didn't have any dust problem, I won, but uh, not enough uh, for to, to stay close to, to you. So, as the rally's third day comes to its end, Mickey Biasion's thwarted by the dust as Juha Kankanen extends his lead. Behind them, Oriol has similar problems as he tries to close on Trellet in the Lancia, while Mohammed bin Suleyem continues his domination of Group N in sixth place, and the amazing Renault 18 of Gabriel Reyes leads Formula 2 in 8th place. So the result as the cars start their third and final leg, with Juha Kankanen in a 1 minute and 13 second lead over Mickey Biasion, Gustavo Trellis 7 minutes and 40 seconds behind with Didier Oriol 4th, Carlos Menem Jr. 5th and Mohamed bin Suleyem in 6th. They break for the final day of the rally. Perfect weather conditions with the Argentinian winter giving cold crisp mornings turning to bright clear sunshine. And it's a 6.30 a.m. start for the cruise, heading south to Santa Rosa for the opening special stage of a 553 kilometer special stage loop which will give 130 kilometers of competitive motoring before the final run into Cordoba. And even in the isolated countryside of the San Augustin province, huge crowds have turned out. With Menem's success, local interest is high, but they also know that Biasion's set to make a final attempt for the lead. Hankinen and Gris prepare for the start. The pace notes are in order and the countdown begins. <laughs> driving flawlessly and right on the limit. The teamwork between Kankanen and Grist is really working, setting the fastest time on the first four stages of the day. But meanwhile, Mickey Biasion is flying too. But the trouble for Biasion, as we'll see from the in-car, his old friend the dust has returned. Biasion forced to slow his pace yet again. It's ruined any chance of a Ford victory. Meanwhile, for Gustavo Trelle, holding on in third place, a fine result after the rally started so disastrously for Lancia. But he's still watching the timesheets carefully because Oriol's inching ever closer. Despite being worried by an oil leak from his gearbox, he's closing on Trellis with every mile. Meanwhile, for Carlos Menem, the rally is coming to a superb conclusion, running in a fine fifth place on his Group A debut. Ahead of Mohamed bin Suleyem, he's sixth and he leads Group N now by 19 minutes. Up to seven, Rudy Stahl in the Audi Quattro S2, ahead of Gabriel Reyes, a fine eighth place in the two-wheel drive 2-litre two Renault. 
43 and Newhark Hankinen continues his run of success with Nicky Grist working hard as ever on the pace notes. At last though, a breeze is moving the dust cloud and Biasion responds trying harder and harder than ever. Biasion right on the ragged edge and just look at his distinctive driving position hunched right over the steering wheel. Trellet holding on in that third place in the Lancia Delta Integrale with Oriol charging harder and harder in his attempt to get on terms. A fisherman high in the Sierras as the cars head north of Cordoba for the final two stages and Nicky Grist gets out of the Toyota to direct Juha Kankanen into the right place at the control. Also going on at the control is fuel sampling. The FISA technical chief, Gabriel Kadringer, checking out that the cars are only using either the 100 octane Avgas aviation fuel or a FISA approved pump petrol. A relaxed Carlos Menem starts the stage. He's had to handle the problems of being a celebrity as well as the new, more powerful car. Mohammed bin Suliam concentrates hard. He's had so many problems in the past, he can't believe that this rally's been so lucky for him. Meanwhile, Rudy Stahl is ready to go in the first of the two privateer Audis, and the crowds are literally everywhere. The second of the Audis, that's Manfred Stoll. Despite his problems, the two Audis are heading to be the top privateers, and he'll be heading for 12th place. Meanwhile, watch out for some more Argentinian ingenuity. Ricardo Bissio and Felipe Magoff limping out of the stage after another broken throttle cable. The Goff has got the hot seat, literally. But for Gabriel Wright, he's now running in ninth place and the local fans are absolutely delighted to see one of their two-wheel drive cars in the top ten. Hitting him to that eighth place though is Antonio Coutinho, the Portuguese driver on his first ever Argentinian rally. He took that place on the very final stage in his second in Group N. Seventh overall is Rudi Stoll, the first of the Audis, and the big Audi five cylinders both making it to the finish line. Sixth place from Mohammed bin Suliem, the leading Group N contender, and Suliem eventually getting the result he feels he deserves. Bin Suliem in fifth place, it was Carlos Menem, but he had a scare on the second from last stage when a rear suspension arm broke and he was forced to drag the car over the stage on three wheels, but he still held on to that place. In fourth place, Gustavo Trellis was also in trouble in the Lancia when he found the component that was giving the car odd handling. It broke and the front suspension collapsed on the penultimate stage, the car finishing the stage on three wheels with Giorgio Del Buono sitting in the boot to balance it. And despite their efforts, Oriol moved up into the third position. After a troubled rally, although once his problems were cured, he was capable of matching Kankinen's stage times. The dust once again bedeviling the car's efforts to try and close in on one another. And certainly there was no consolation for Mickey Biasion in setting a string of fastest times on the final stages, because once again the dust had thwarted any attempt to strike for the rally lead. But a fine result nonetheless for the Ford team who came to Argentina at short notice and leave Argentina just three points behind Toyota in the Manufacturers World Championship. But ahead of the escort, it's Juha Kankanen and Nicky Grist heading for victory after an absolutely faultless drive. And for Nicky Grist, the honour of being the first British co-driver to win a World Championship rally in over ten years. 
Raikkonen and Grip setting the pace right to the final stage and the car heading towards the very final control of the Rally of Argentina. Into the service area and Uwe Anderson and the Toyota service team wait to applaud their winners home. It's also an emotional victory for Juha Kankanen, the first rally he's won in over eight years without Juha Peronen alongside him, but Nicky Grist has done the job absolutely perfectly. Applause too for Didier Oriol, a gritty drive to third place in more ways than one. Who thought the service coordinator congratulates Juha Kankanen but it's over to the Cordoba Stadium, where it's fiesta time. Three, four parachutes, Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, and a crowd of over 60,000 cheer Juha Kankanen onto the podium. Juha Kankanen and Nicky Grist, winners of the 1993 Rally of the Argentina. For the Toyota team, the champagne flows. Juha Kankanen and Nicky Griss as Mickey Piazzi on parks in the background. It's their moment to celebrate victory on the Rally of Argentina. Kankanen taking victory by 1 minute and 54 seconds for Mickey Piazzi with Didier Oriol third for Toyota, Gustavo Trello fourth for Lancia, and Carlos Menem Jr. a fine fifth place. Mohamed bin Sulian best group end, but onto the podium, robbed by the pampas dust of a record-breaking fourth Argentinian victory, but celebrating his second place, it's Mickey Biasion. And that second place moves Biasion to the lead of the Drivers' World Championship, just three points ahead of Kankanen, and then Francois Delacour for Ford is third ahead of Didier Oriol, Carlos Sainz and Marco Allen. Yes, I have been quite unlucky here always, but now everything was working perfect this time, so very happy. A difficult victory for you or very plain sailing? Well, let's say when you when everything works well, it makes the things much easier, but it's never easy to win, of course, because Nicky was pushing all the time and I was a bit worried about if something happened because we were very unlucky in Greece, but now everything, sun is shining again, so we are very happy about that. Well, the sun shining for Toyota as they gain three more points over Ford in the Manufacturers' Championship. The two manufacturers ahead of Lancia, Mitsubishi and Subaru. But was that second place sufficient consolation for Biasion? 